on the auto car show it's raining new cars we bring you a test drive of the all new jetta and the all new bmw x3 all the hot and happening news from the indian f1 track and as always hormuz brings you all the news from the industry hello and welcome to the auto car show now, Volkswagen's gathered quite a fan following in India, and in the last four years, it's become a hugely aspirational brand. Well, maybe that's the reason that the company chooses to have a shared look across all their products, and that's the case even in the all-new Jetta. This Jetta is different from the outgoing model. Gone are the softer, rounder edges, and they're replaced by crisper, horizontal lines. It's the interesting nose that catches your eye. Wide horizontal grille, angular lamps and tray-shaped splitter. Now for our roads, this protrusion is a bit dodgy. But it serves its purpose to reduce the drag coefficiency of this car, making it cut through the air easier. This car has also grown in every dimension. And its size looks quite impressive now. Despite all the changes, the new Jetta does not grab your attention. In fact, this shared look sometimes can be confusing. Now when you look at it from a distance, doesn't it actually look so much like the Vento? That's the mistake I made as well. I actually walk around at the back to check the badge and realize that this is the Jetta. When you're closer to it, you do realize that this is a bigger car, but it looks so much like its siblings. You could actually even mistake it for the larger Passat. And that's what Volkswagen would really like. But let's get inside and see what's different. From the inside, this Jetta is actually more mini Passat than anything Vento. It's really top-notch plastics, exemplary fit and finish and quality that make it look levels higher. There's a nice chunky steering with indents for the thumb and steering mounted controls. The switch gear is all chrome and rubberized and feels really nice to use. The seats are now four leather or what Volkswagen call leatherette. And the driver's seat now gets electric power adjustments. However, a downgrade we noticed was a lack of dual climate control without even a digital temperature readout. The plastic that this control was mounted on was the only tacky bit in the car. In fact, on its own it's not so bad, but Compared to the rest of the quality, it stands out. But Volkswagen have also added on a list of goodies. Let's take a look. Another area that gets a boost is under the hood. This now has a 140 bhp version of the same turbo diesel. That's 30 bhp more. That's quite a bit. Now, this is an engine that we've experienced in the Lora and the Super. It's a bit of a noisy engine. When you rev it hard, you do hear it. It's not an irritating clatter, but there's this gruff sound that's always there. I'm driving the manual version and I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It's a punchy, talky engine that's, you know, got power to pull you through any situation. Put your foot down, there's always response. There is an initial hint of lag, but then after that, it just pulls and pulls. Power's just not adequate. It's actually bloody good in this engine. Out on the highway in Udaipur, we were also able to check the top-end performance of the Jetta. It maintains a good clip with amazing ease. 
even at 150 or 160, it seems relaxed, never feels out of breath. Quick overtaking maneuvers are also easy with the power spread, but I have to say it's easier in the manual than in the DSG. Now I drove the auto box as well and that actually feels like my son early in the morning. It takes a little bit of a while to wake up and once he wakes up, it's all systems go and that's just it, you know, it takes a little while to react, shifts down a little slowly and then once you shift down, there's this surge of power. Once we got off the highway to the twisty windy sections, we could really test the Jetta's agility. The steering, though accurate, really didn't offer much feedback, making me a little more tentative around the corners. Now, when you go around a series of corners, you realize that the Jetta just doesn't like to be pushed hard around the corners. It's aimed more for a leisurely, more comfortable drive. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very stable, it's very planted, but it tends to go a bit wide around the corners. Jetta is great to drive fast, but just not furiously. It's better for cruising, and when you are cruising, it's a really tireless drive. This softer edge to the Jetta has also made the ride quality great. It deals with bumps and potholes much better than before. At lower speeds, you do feel a touch more of firmness, but overall, it's still a far more comfortable ride. Now, another area that's improved is NVH. Earlier, there used to be quite a drumming sound from the tyre wells that used to filter through to the cabin. That's all gone now, and it's a very silent and comfortable rear seat. Now, when we talk about comfort, legroom is really great, and space is improved from before as well. Well, it's grown in size and it offers up more features, so is this new Jetta actually better value? Well, if you consider the 14.21 lakhs X showroom for the base model, it certainly seems so. But then when you think about the 3.75 lakhs more that you have to spend for the top of the end, it seems a bit pricey. However, if price is really not your concern and you want a classy, well-built, comfortable saloon with a premium badge, it just doesn't get better than this.